All right, you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini, and this is episode 47. We are getting very close to our one-year mark. It's crazy how fast the time has gone by. <laughs> uh, before, yeah, I know. Before we get into today's topic, of course, as we always tell you guys to like, comment, subscribe, click on the buttons, wherever they may be, show us some support. We do look at all the comments. Um, they help to um, spawn new ideas for these things as well. So um, the ideas for the idea for today's topic about travel hacks came because I know you and myself are both going into a long period of travel at this point. So um, we've already been traveling a little bit, but I feel like it's just getting started where it's going to start getting really crazy. So um, we have to do this all the time. I know people ask about these kinds of things in prep all the time. So this has just become kind of our lifestyle. And I think that we take it for granted because it's easy because we do it every week. Um, so I think we have, we have a lot of things to share. So um, before we do all that, I mean, again, one of the things that, 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 spawn this as I was looking over my travel schedule over the next, you know, couple of months and I got a little bit of anxiety. So, <laughs> so how are you doing over there? I know we just talked on Thursday, but has anything changed between Thursday and today for you as far as plans and prep and all that, that stuff like that? No, not really. Pretty status quo. I know that's boring when we do yeah, pretty much back to back episodes, but no, I check in tomorrow <laughs> with Jamie. So I just took a rest day today after uh, seven days of no rest. So oh. my body was screaming a little bit. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what tomorrow brings. And then I leave again on Thursday for Masters Nats. Masters, so I'm heading yeah. to Pittsburgh. Yeah. 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 Which I'll see you there. I'll be there on Friday. Yes. Um, yeah, because I'll drive up first thing in the morning. So I was looking at my schedule. This last for Universe, I checked in with Jamie on Wednesday because I had to drive on Thursday. But this time we're back to like the girls are all on Saturday. So we're back to like a normal show schedule this week. So I was like getting all mess messed up with my my days and stuff because I was like last time we had to do it early. Now we're back on a normal show schedule this week. So I like having normal show schedules. <laughs> it's normal show schedule, but the girls still have to check in Thursday night. So that stinks. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that. I just got off a, a posing call with one of my girls that are competing. And she's like, my flight doesn't land till like an hour before the check-ins are over. I'm like, check-ins are on Friday. She's like, no, they're on Thursday. It's like, oh, well, I land at 9 p.m. on Thursday. So I'm missing check-ins. <laughs> so oh, yeah. We're going to try to figure that out. But we'll see. I would assume that they're probably going to let people check in late. I, you know what I mean? It literally says on there, like, be there or be square. Like, literally. Oh, really? Like, okay. Yeah. They're like, no okay. check-ins on Friday. So we're, I just kept telling her, we're just going to pray it all works out. Yeah. <laughs> That's always what we do. <laughs> no, again, again, I always go back to, yes, I'm sure that they say that, but like if travel plans get delayed, it's not your fault. They're going to, they're going to work with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. They'll figure it yeah. out. They're not going to deny your money. <laughs> Basically, I mean, basically, especially, especially that show where it's cash uh, only, so. right? I know yeah. for real. So, I, I mean, I think it's going to be a pretty easy show. Um, like I was saying last week, I actually had one girl pull out, so I'm happy about that because now I don't have to start here and make it at 3 a.m. So, I'm like, yes, yeah, <laughs> like uh, a little bit. It's just long, it's just a long day, yeah. you know. So, I gotta plan my um, plan my like workouts and training around that that'll be my rest day you know so um but yeah over the weekend so for me things did kind of change a little bit since our last uh our last podcast because i had my check-in with jamie and then i was sitting down and looking at travel and all that kind of stuff and i was like i'm gonna be on the road every single weekend starting september 21st every single weekend until november <laughs> and i was like i was like um so I started looking at the schedule and I was like, okay, this doesn't make sense. Like why? Cause my first show is going to be Sasquatch, which is in Seattle on the other opposite side of the country for me. Right. So it's like a 12 hour travel day, three hour time difference, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, why am I starting with this show? Why don't I just start the next week, Daytona, Florida, same time zone, quick flight. We're good. You know? And then I can do four shows and I've got Daytona. There's um, Georgia the next week. There's Olympia. Then there's like, what is it? Uh, it's another Florida one, two more Florida ones. So I'm like, uh, okay, and there's my not battle of the bodies, Atlantic coast. Yes. That one. Yes. Um, so I was like, why don't I just do that? So I was like, I'm going to amend my schedule. I sent it to Jamie and she's like, oh, that's, that all sounds good. She's like, but we were going to do Sasquatch because I'm going to be there. She's like, I'm not going to be there at any of your shows until, until Atlantic coast. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> like, that's right. I'm like, Oh shit. <laughs> so I was 
well, let's calendar as if I'm doing it for Sasquatch. I said, but we'll just kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. And, you know, if I decide that I'm ready for it, great, we'll go and I'll, I'll make the, the trip and everything like that. But if I'm, you know, if I'm questioning it at all, it's just, it's just for me, I'm just thinking, why am I going all the way across the country when I can just literally go go right straight down four times and be done? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, well, that and then. Um, so that's still up in the air. So now I'm either I'm either nine weeks out or 10 weeks out. It's one of the two little less Sasquatch is supposed to be my first show of the year too. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm like, well, for you and you're in Arizona, that's not as bad of a flight. You know, you're right. Yeah. It's at least there. It's right there. So, um, and that's why she's going to be there obviously because she's going to have clients there. So it makes sense. And then I can't do the weekend prior to that because that my, Dan and I already have plans for that weekend. And then we were talking about the weekend before that, but that's when I'm supposed to get my cycle. So I'm like, I don't want to chance what happened in Hawaii. Like, what's the point, you know? So it's a waste too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, there's no, there's no point in doing all that. So anyway, so it's kind of up in the air as far as where we are um, for that, which it's not a huge deal. We're definitely going to do Daytona. That's for sure. That might be my first show, might be my second. We'll, we'll just see. Um, but then also, I'm not going to go to Tampa this time because I have one NPC girl in it. I was going to have a, a pro in it, um, but she's pushing to Nashville. So I was like, at this point, it doesn't really make sense for me to do one more trip when I've got one person in the show, right? <laughs> you know, save your money. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, and, and plus that would be three again, three weekends in a row of shows because we've got Masters, then I've got a local show, then I've got Tampa, one week off, then Nashville, then one week off, then North America. And so I was like, I gotta, I just gotta pick and choose my spots, you know. So I decided no to Tampa. Um, and I go, I always go to Nashville because I used to live there and like my best friend still lives there. So I can go hang out. I'm going to stay, stay till Monday. So I can go hang out with her and all that kind of stuff. So I make the most of my trip. So actually a lot of things did change <laughs> since, since the last podcast for me. I'm like, I'm just sitting there like writing all this stuff out. I was like, holy crap, this is a lot because, because in between there is the Olympia, you know, in, in October. And that's a long one. That's like four days, you know? So, oh, I know. A... I know. <laughs> You're like, I know. Trust me. Aware. <laughs> very, very aware. Very aware. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be gonna be wild. Yeah, wild. it's just basically it's gonna go by so fast. Thanksgiving, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this is normal. It's about <laughs> mid July, and then it's like bam, and then, yeah. Oh man! I so, just look at my travel schedule. I have a shared note between me, Drew, um, a couple of friends that like I'm really close with, and then our house setter. Um, and every time I look at that spreadsheet, I'm like damn <laughs> when am I going to be home it's literally going to be like two two days here three days here yeah, yeah it just is what it is you know yeah it's crazy I and I have done this in years past where it's like I will be on the road for three four weekends in a row and it's brutal it's brutal yeah. you know I've always told myself that I wouldn't do that again that's why I limit myself to like two shows two shows a month that's what I limit myself to but when you start putting into the equation yourself competing you know, <laughs> yeah. then it's yeah. like, oh, that, that brings a whole new level of difficulty. And, you know, and I'm just like, you know, and I, and I, the other thing too, is like, just, just the simple things of being in the same time zone makes a difference. It does. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, it affects your sleep. It affects your digestion, your meal timing, and those things to us are sacred, you know? So yeah. it's, it's very difficult going back and forth. And when I'm in this back and forth, I just try to stay on East coast time because mm -hmm. that's the majority of where I'm traveling to. So like when I'm in Arizona right now, I'm waking up at 5.30 in the morning, which would actually be pretty late for when I would wake up in the East Coast, which would be around 8.30. So right. it's difficult. It's really, really difficult. I find it's easier to land in the East Coast from the PST time zone because then I'm yeah. just kind of later and then I could just adjust faster. But it's harder actually coming back because I usually do such an early flight and then I land in Phoenix so early. So like I'll land at like 8.40 Phoenix time, but I've been up since... 1 30 phoenix yeah. time so it's just it's harder for me to adjust that way is coming home but yeah that's why i just try to i just try to stay on the same one stay if i know same. i'm going back to back to back to back to back to back weekends well that makes sense too because depending on where you've got clients i'm sure you have clients always on the east coast you got to be up early for them regardless you know what Correct. i mean like yeah like i was i had a client on stage in uh, republic of texas this, this past weekend and i was home so i, I set an alarm at 4 30 and i was up waiting for her to get up yeah. uh, to send me her check-in and things like that and yeah, that's what you do <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you just, yeah. Gotta, you just gotta work with it so 
Yeah, so I, what I've decided I'm going to do actually for Tampa, I did this for the UK Arnold. I did a, a live watch like on my YouTube channel. I, I got the live stream and then I watched it along with people like watching and oh, they cool. came on my live and did we just did commentary back and forth. It was a lot of fun. So I was yeah. like, I'm going to do do that for tampa i'm going to get the live stream and just go live fun. on my youtube and watch it with everybody you know so yeah, it, was, it was a lot of fun for the uk so i was like i haven't done that since i was thinking about that i was like i can just stay home and do the live stream because the other part about the tampa show too is you can't record you know you can't do any of those kinds of things you like you can't take pictures at least so at least at universe they let us take pictures this year last year they yeah. didn't even let us take pictures no, they were yelling at us yesterday or, or this last, last year on our phones. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, like, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even taking a video. I'm just texting someone. Why are I you know. yelling at me? <laughs> I know. I think I told that story where I was sitting there and I was looking at one of the NPC news online photos on my phone and they thought that I took it. I was like, it literally has the watermark of NPC news online on the, on the photo. I'm like, I didn't take this picture. I'm looking yeah, at a text super message. Strict. They're super Holy strict, geez. but yeah, at Tampa Pro, they're very, very, very. strict. So very, yeah. yeah. Like if you even pull your phone out, they're like, no. <laughs> I know. It's like, I feel like I'm in high school again, like texting in my texting in my in my purse. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Trying I know. to hide it from the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It's like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was like, that'll be fun that way. And then um, and then you're are you going to Nashville or no? No, I'm not, where am I that week in Tahoe? So I go, okay. I go Masters Nat, Tampa, Tahoe, Clash, okay. North Americans. Then what, the, I don't know what the first weekend of September is. Maybe I have a week off, thank God. Oh no, Drew's getting a surgery. And oh, then okay. we go into me competing. So that would yeah. be like Sas yeah. Sasquatch, Legions. Yeah. yeah, that whole thing. Yep, yeah. yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, so, it's, and that's gonna come quick. You know, it's come so fast. I was just like, the, the, the other thing too, I was like, so I, I was saying this to my friend earlier. I was like, I think I blew a fuse yesterday because I was in the middle of, like, of my cardio and I started pouring sweat. This is last night, right? I was like drenched. I was like, what is going on? And I was like shaking almost. I was like, what is happening right now? So when I got done with my cardio, I sat down on the couch. I was waiting for Dan to come down because we always take our, our walk at night. We do a walk around the around the neighborhood. It takes 40 minutes to our walk. We get our steps in. So I'm sitting on the couch waiting for him to come down. And I'm literally, I can't keep my eyes open. Like I'm literally falling asleep sitting on the couch. I was like, did I just blow a fuse? Like literally I felt like, I, like my whole body just like short circuited and I'm done. So you know, once he came down, we went to our walk. I was fine at that point. I don't know what it was. I don't know exactly. But I yesterday was also my high carb day. And I'm usually the day after I weigh a little bit more because I have more carbs. This morning I woke up and I dropped two pounds. And I was like, the, the fuck did I do with my body? <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I have no idea what just happened, but I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to Finally needs the food. Now your metabolism is like spiking from the, from the higher carbs. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, well, I guess this is what's happening right now. So I'm like, okay, may, who knows? Maybe I'll be early and I, I can compete at the you know beginning of September. Who knows? But now I'm only five pounds within my like five pounds from my stage, not five pounds. Okay. Yeah, no, five pounds from my stage weight. You and I then sure. are on the same timeline, which is funny. I'm I'm about five pounds off too. So yeah. like when I checked in with her in, in person last week, she's like, You're ten you're supposed to be ten weeks out, but we're about six weeks out. And I was like, Yeah. Are you gonna throw me into a show? I know what you do. I know. I know, I know how this goes. I know. <laughs> uh, well, and that's what I said too, because my my cycle has been very light the last couple of months, last two months. And I know it's because I'm getting leaner, and I'm like, well, maybe it wouldn't be too big of an issue if I went into like the Florida Pro, Pro that first weekend of September. But again, again, that's why I'm like I'm kind of up in the air about everything right now. I'm not gonna push it. You know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'll be at the end of September. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it is so close to you that if you do hop into that show, then you could easily make travel arrangements. Correct. And just yeah, just hop into it. So yeah, yeah, it's easy to but do. But that's awesome. So, Everything's starting yeah. to click in here. Finally, well, it's like one of those things like we talked about. Like I was just sitting, I was stagnant for so long, and now everything's like okay, we're we're turning on now. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> it's like all right, cool. You know, yeah, you just so. gotta ride that initial wave after a long improvement season, and then all of a sudden it's. Well, From this there, is why you, you, know? you got to stay consistent with everything too. I think people get really like disheartened sometimes. They feel like the progress should be faster or whatever it may be. They should have more of a linear kind of kind of look at what they're doing. So that doesn't work like that. You know, like sometimes you will hold on to fat and everything for a while, and then you have that whoosh effect, and just all of a sudden everything just starts dropping. You know, yeah. so. 
you just got to stick to the plan. You just got to stay consistent. And that's the, that's, I think that's probably one of the hardest things for people to do is like when they don't see, they don't see the progress, like going how it should go. Cause you're going to go like this throughout prep. You know what I mean? So it's where a lot of people adapt the effort mentality, mm-hmm. you know, especially for a normal dieter, you know, right. they do four or six weeks of, hardcore dieting to them and they're not seeing a response. So then they just say F it and then go bench. And then, you know, that's why a lot of people can't lose weight because they just don't allow themselves the time and consistency to see that progress. And that's right. Yeah. They can adapt to, um, you know, patience, patience is, it's a virtue and it's something you have to teach yourself, but it it's, it's needed, especially dieting, you know, we're dealing with the body, you know, two plus two on most cases equals four, but then you also add in the body, which has, you know, neurotransmitters and hormones and Mm -hmm. stress and it needs sleep and it needs all these different things that we don't necessarily have control over a lot of the times. You know, I have a client right now, she's in the middle of a reverse diet. She's about eight weeks post-show and her mom is like, really, really sick right now. And, you know, she's like, I'm really stressed, you know, my weight keeps going up. And like, I said to her this morning, like, this is not a stress that's going away right now. Like, it's not a maintainable stress. So you just have to do the best you can, you know, and it's difficult. It's really, really Mm -hmm. difficult, especially during those things of things that you can't control, because all of us in this in, in that are thriving in this sport or type a and yep. we have our routine or very specific and we want to be controlled you know control the situation but something you just can't yeah well i think that's a hard thing to portray to people too when they're first starting in this as well it's like they think that they can just kind of fudge around you know what i mean it's like no you, you actually have to have very controlled consistent things i mean everything makes a difference and if you don't do if you don't put one of those pieces together something's going to be off and you're not you're just not going to get it off right so you have to, you have to be very diligent, right? I had a, I had a consult with a, with a lady today. Like I actually really loved her energy. She's all about yoga and all this kind of stuff. And like, she's telling me what she eats. She eats all these holistic foods and she eats according to like the season, like what's in season and everything like that. I'm like, that's actually really cool. I like, I'm like, that's really fun. She's like, yeah, she's like, you know, she's tried everything in her life. She's tried, you know, Zumba and she was a dancer and she does yoga and she does all this stuff. So she's considering potentially doing a, a show. And she's like, yeah, but I don't, she's like, but I rebel against structure. I said, well, then you're going to have a hard time doing this. I said, I just got to, I'm going to be honest. I said, listen, I said, if, if you want to see the results and if you want to get ripped and everything like that and get on stage, you have to be structured. I said, so yeah, you can't right have that now. like aloof type nope. personality. Yeah. No, I'm like, if you're happy the way that you're, that you're living right now with everything that you're doing, that's great. I said, but if you want to get on stage, it takes another level of structure. I said, you do have to log everything. Because she, her mom, I guess, does all this Weight Watcher stuff and logs, logs everything every day and all this kind of stuff. She's like, I can't do that. I was like, well, then, <laughs> I was like, you're probably gonna have a hard time in this sport. I'm just saying, you know. I was like, we can, we can. She wants to try it, and I'm like, but if you're not, I'm like, if it if it doesn't fit for you, it doesn't fit for you. You gotta, you're gonna have to be structured. It's just part of it. I'm like, we need, we need to be able to control everything. So. Yeah, especially comparing with the Weight Watchers, because the Weight Watchers is a great system, you know, for somebody yeah. that's new to dieting yeah. at that point system. But if that is her version of, um, you know, can, like a, a consistent tracking variable, like macros is so much more detailed, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, yeah. It is. it's it's difficult. And, I, and we've talked about this. You know, I think that's where a lot of people that are new to the sport don't understand kind of the mm-hmm. ins and the nuances and the little things that we have to do and stay consistent with to be successful. Um, and it is, it's a lot. And, you know, until that first consult call with somebody is interested and then they start to hear all the things that you have to do. I just had a a recent consult call with a girl that, that she wrote in there. I'm 17 turning 18 in a couple months. And I'm always hesitant on that. I'm like, Oh, you're a high school. Like I couldn't imagine doing this sport in high school, you know? So we got on a call and she literally said at the end, she's like, I think it'd be best for me to wait until I graduate. And I said, yes, I think yes, that's probably. a great idea. Yeah, but I'm really yep. glad that like I was able to be, you know, her first experience and talk her through yeah. what that looks like. And now she has a yeah. really clear picture of what it's going to take. So, you know, that way she knows when the time is right for her. Perhaps if she would have, you know, done with another coach, they just would have sang, you know, whatever they that sh- they thought she needed to hear to collect that's her right. money. And then she wouldn't have that's been right. successful in the end. And again, that's, that's where really. like some of these first time competitors are getting ruined their first time because they don't have that communication up front. They truly mm-hmm. don't know what to expect. And then they have such a poor experience because their expectation is not what 
anything of what they expected. So that's right. That's, that's, that's right. That's our job. Our job is to educate at the end, you know, at the end of the day and our clients are yeah. going to be drawn to us and what that yeah. first call, you know, how it, how it shakes out. Yep. And that's what I said to her. That's how, for, for the girl I was having the consult with today. I said, you know, I said, think about it. See if this is something that you really want to commit to. I said, because you, you're going to have to be structured. She's like, she totally showed up. She tends to rebel against structure. And I was like, I get it. Understand. I'm like, she's got the whole holistic yogi thing going on. I get it. Understand. I said, this, if you don't want to go structured, this may not be the right thing for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know? Yeah. So, but she, no, she was like, this is really interesting though. She's like, it's very interesting. I was like, it's very interesting, but it takes a lot of commitment. Yes. <laughs> Like, yeah. Honestly, like someone like that, I'd be like, don't even like think about a competition right now. Like just start yeah. lifestyle coaching with and me. And it's not said. as serious. Yeah. And then you could kind of see like, oh, I like this and I can take yep. it to the next step. And then some people I took consult that with and they're like, oh my God, I love my yoga. I love, you know, eating the fruits mm-hmm. and vegetables of the season. And I, I do love the way I love the way I look. And I'm like, then why are you changing it? That's you sound right. really happy. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you figure yeah. out what works for you, you know? That's but right. everybody's and- so curious about the story and it's only getting bigger you know that's so right. i think it's and i like that i think people are curious they just want to learn absolutely and that's what she said too at the end she was like have you ever had somebody just do this just to get like in really good shape and ripped and not actually go on stage I said, yeah absolutely i said absolutely you can do that i said it takes another level to get on stage i said but you can do it as a transformation for sure 100 yeah. percent. i said so maybe that's the direction you want to go you know what i mean once you get into it you, if you like it you know what i mean so that's absolutely something we could do but and everybody's version of ripped yeah, and aesthetically pleasing is so different, you know? Yeah. So like some people will be like, show me what photo you want. Like, what is yep. your ideal photo? What's your ideal look? And like, I see a photo, I'm like, oh yeah, we could do that. That's easy, yeah. you know? But to them, they're like, that would be ripped. Yeah, because <laughs> so, it was funny because she brought up like names of figure competitors from when figure first started like wow. way back in the day. That's and cool. I was like, I, cause she's, she's 51. She was older. You know what I mean? Some, I catered to master's clients and things like that. And so she was bringing up these names and I was like, I don't know who you're talking about. I was like, yeah, I was like, I was like, that would be considered bikini today. <laughs> I was like, but I know who you're talking about. <laughs> and that's a little bit of a mind fuck. <laughs> yes. That was the other thing too. And that was the thing too. She was like, cause she lives in, in Jersey out, outside of New York and everything. And um, she's like, there's not a lot of that going on up here. My one girlfriend went to, to Florida and there's a ton of it down there. I said, there's a ton of it right where you are i said you're like literally right by the mecca of bodybuilding with Bev's gym it's like literally right there (laughs) i was like there's a ton right there i'm like you absolutely this we have lots of resources you know some people just don't even know she's like yeah she had a friend that that went and moved to florida and started doing this stuff and she's like yeah she got super ripped i was like yeah florida's florida florida and texas are the two biggest um the biggest npc yeah Yeah. correct yeah like they they have the most npc cards given out at uh in florida and texas of all of the states so yeah plus yeah well everybody's moving to florida so that makes sense i know are they still moving to florida now though like they were during the pandemic but are they moving out now no they're all still moving to florida (laughs) or people are moving out of florida to texas and i'm like somebody pick a different state (laughs) see i see a lot of people moving to texas i see a lot of people moving to texas like we've had we're considering moving to texas we were we were considering we were looking at houses out there but god i went there a couple times last year and the summer was just brutal you think summer in arizona is brutal like literally you could see like the heat coming off the concrete it was awful Awful. Well, because they, they've got the humidity in Texas as well, not just the dry heat like Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's it's like the, the temperature of Arizona is like 105 with the yeah. humidity and it feels just like an oven. I felt, I yeah. thought my shoes were melting to, to the concrete out there. We went there the week after, the weekend after Tahoe last year. So I left like 65 degrees and yeah. this beautiful sunshine weather. We went right, right to Texas and, um, I, w- I got off the plane and I'm like, get me back to Tahoe right now. <laughs> what can we weather? Can we just turn around? Can yes. we pull, pull a Yui? <laughs> <laughs> right? No, I mean, I have a couple of aunts that live in Texas. I had my my sister-in-law's sister, both of them were thinking about moving to Texas, same situation kind of thing. And I was just like, yeah, no, I'm not my thing. Here. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy in Virginia. It's hot as balls here. It, like I'm like, and we're in Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, it's I'm yeah. like I'm I'm good. I don't need to go any further south. I'm I'm good right here. You it's know, everything's everywhere. moderate. Yeah, I've, I've said, said this before. Everything's moderate here. It's not bad. Yeah. Like, and even even at night, it gets it gets 
it gets okay. That's why we that's why we walk at night. We wait till the sun goes down and we do our walk around the neighborhood because then at least it's tolerable, you know. Yeah. So, I was doing roof walks up until a few weeks ago and it's just it's still hot at seven o'clock yeah. here. Like it's brutal. Like yeah. right now with me being this lean, I'm like, I can't I can't do that. Well you're right sitting now. there in a sweat in a sweatshirt and everything. <laughs> yeah. I had to go take one of my cars up to the dealership, so I just threw on the zip jacket. So oh, I'm the freaky lean right now where everybody's like what do you do? What do you do? I'm like, I don't, right. I don't have time for this right now. Yeah. Where they <laughs> yeah. stop you everywhere you go. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, it's, it's so, cool. So do, you, so do you like lift? And I'm like, yeah, yeah no, yeah, I, dabble, no, no. I dabble a little bit. I little bit. I lift a little bit. <laughs> She's like, no, I don't go to the gym. I was born like this. <laughs> this, is just, this is how I came out. Yeah. This is how I came out. Yep. hundred percent. No, I, I, you know, it's, and you're right. I mean, it's, it's flattering to have those kind of comments made because you know, you put all that work in, but at the same time, you're like, I got, I got stuff to do. Right. <laughs> it's like, can I, can I go now, please? Yeah. <laughs> I, I drove Drew's car. The, we uh, got our second car shipped out here and it's Drew's car, his stinger. And I was whipping her around town the other day and I was empty, like empty. And I was like, do I stop and get gas right now? Nope. I can't <laughs> stop at it. I got a gas station right now. So I pulled in, he goes and uh, drives it the next day. He's like baby left it on e and i was like i was not pulling into a gas station <laughs> with my shorts on and a sports bra i was like okay fair i wouldn't want you to do that either I'm like yeah. I'm really sorry that's too funny that's yeah. too funny yeah i go i go out, like this is pretty baggy i go out all baggy, and i've got sweatpants on I, I mean i'll show my shoulders off but that's about it when i go out i just don't just yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, cover it up. Cover it up. I, I'll do the sweatpants <laughs> over my shorts and a jacket over my sports bra. And then when I get to the gym, I just take it off. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm so not a shorts person. So many people love shorts. I hate shorts. I hate. I used to. Just, oh, they ride up. I'm like, ugh. I don't like it at all. I used all. to. No, I only <laughs> wear them when I'm lean. <laughs> yeah, I can't yeah. stand it. Yeah, it's funny because this was a few years ago. I went to the gym. It was like the only time I've ever gone. To, it was the middle of the summer. It was super hot. It's the only time I've gone to the gym in, in shorts. And I sat on one of the benches. I ended up getting a freaking bacterial infection from the sweat on the benches. Mm. I had to go to the, go freaking get medication to put on the backs of my legs. Mm. I was like, okay. I was like, no more, no more shorts. <laughs> no more shorts. I know. I was like, because. Because what happens in those gyms is people get all sweaty, especially these bodybuilder gyms. People get all sweaty and they don't wipe stuff down. And then you sit on it and it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Gross. I literally it's kick gross. people out of my gym in Florida for that. Yep. If you're watching and you go to my gym in Florida and I notice on a camera, you do not wipe down a bench. You get a call from me or my general manager. You get one warning. One that warning. And if you do not clean, I'm like, it's, this was after COVID, you know, like yeah. you have to. Yeah wipe down equipment and listen i'm a sweater like i sweat hard in the gym mm -hmm. and i i clean up my stuff at, in my own gym like yeah it's disgusting nobody it wants is. to sit, sit in that nobody wants to sit in your, pulling in your out junk. the bench and you see on the where the head was like all the green yeah uh, no the head disgusting. the head marks the head marks are the worst because like yes. you'll sometimes you'll see like the marks from like the 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 tank tops like you'll see yeah. like where they leaned against or whatever even that's gross but the head marks are disgusting yeah like just wipe it down it takes 30 seconds and then just yeah. take it with you like, yeah. it's not hard it's not that and then you know obviously putting like re-racking re racking your weight too like obviously yeah. oh cool you can put four plates on each side but you can't unrack it you can't like, take it down i know right. i know that's that's the equivalent of not putting your card away at the at the grocery store yes. <laughs> i'm like it takes a special kind of human to, or just not human non-human to just leave your cart in the middle of the freaking parking lot i saw oh i saw a reel on instagram i can't i don't remember who put it up but it was like this bodybuilder guy and he was following people in the it, it was like a Walmart parking lot. And if they oh, didn't God. put their if they didn't put their carts away, he would go up to their car. He would take the cart, put it in the in the back in the back of their car so they couldn't pull out of their parking spot. That's funny. And, go, and he would go up to the window and say, "Hey, you, you know, can you can you get the cart and put it away?" He wasn't mean about it. Like he was yeah. just like like it was a big dude going up yeah. to every window. He's like, "Let's go take care of your cart." You know, and so every time they would get out, they would get their cart and start taking it over to put it into the little thing. It's like, that oh. is my secret weapon. I park near the the thingy. Return. That way yeah. I get steps. Yeah. And I can put my cart back without it being too much of an, of yeah. an inconvenience. Like, it's really not that hard. It's not. It's not difficult. Usually, no. 
like we go to Costco. So like Dan goes to Costco. I hate going to Costco. I hate it. So he goes to Costco. So that's where we usually use the cart. When I go to the grocery store, I'm just picking up random little things like we need throughout the week. So I just use the, the, the bucket, usually the basket. So I don't even do the cart thing, but I'm like, like, man, it just doesn't, it takes an extra two seconds to walk it yeah. to the freaking thing and stick it in there. Like, how hard is that? I don't. Irks me. I know. That show, I, it shows your character. You. It shows your character if you don't put the cart away. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't want someone leaving a cart out and then a wind. Look, this happens all the time. A gust of wind blows and it goes into a vehicle. Like, and that's unfair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I wouldn't want that to happen to my car. No. I wouldn't put leave a shopping cart out for that to happen to your car. So please right. leave it to mine. Yeah. Right. Or <laughs> simple things like the like hit and runs. I had this happen to my vehicle. I didn't even notice it. Dan was, noticed it when I got home. It must have happened when I was at the, at the grocery store because I didn't see it. But when I got home, somebody must have, must have hit my light on my car yeah. because it was all busted out. I was like, That's if, so you hit, annoying. You know, if you hit my car, just leave me a note or something, man. Like, I would do that if I did it yeah. by an accident or whatever. Like, call me or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, I... Nothing. It happens a lot more than you think. Yeah. It's happened at my vehicle's banged up right now for someone doing that too and then my little sister out in florida like she's like my little sister happened to her car like i'm like what why do people do that i don't know i yeah. don't know you know at the end of the day it's like we all make mistakes but like just i don't know and just call or whatever right. got, i've had somebody do that before like i've had them put a note say listen i, I hit your car just wanted to make sure everything's okay call me if there's an issue i have had one person do that before one person yeah and that was it so um, well we love that one person. Yeah, Thank that one person. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Like, that's karma right there. Karma Bring them on the podcast. Around. Let's interview them. That's them. right. I, I know. This. I know. Karma goes both ways, you guys. Go give yourself some good karma, okay? We all make mistakes. We get it. It happens, you know? But just just give yourself some good karma. Yeah. Anyway, that was, that was a random tangent. That was a random tangent. <laughs> okay. Let's do today's topic. Let's do today's travel hacks topic. So I'd just um, like to take a moment to welcome our new channel partners, Prozis. If you are unfamiliar with them, go ahead and go down into my description box now, click on the link, go check out their site. They are the leading supplement sports nutrition company based out of Portugal, been around for 17 years. You might be asking what makes Prozis unique? Well, everything that they make is made in-house or with trusted partners. They have to go through rigorous testing in Portugal in order to even get any products on the market. So what you're going to find, you're going to find really high quality pure supplementation and one of the biggest things for me is I have some GI issues so being able to eat some of these more healthy protein treats and things like that and not have any gut issues oh worth its weight in gold go check them out click on the link in my description box below use the code cuties10 to get all of your discounts and even some special surprises they're always putting out some amazing promotions let them know that I sent you and let me know what you think thanks again for watching and thank you for supporting our channel now Go optimize your own athletic abilities and check out Prozis.com. Topic. So um, I was thinking we pulled up a bunch of um, links and stuff, things that you can purchase from like Amazon and things like that too. But let's just talk about before we get into into that kind of stuff. Um, different, I guess, different things that you do when you go to actually book travel or things that you do like do you drive do you try out do you um do you fly what are your so do you have any parameters that you set in place like i for example if it's more than six hours i will likely fly right um it i was just talking to one of my girls about this because we're going to drive to georgia there's that 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 southern muscle showdown it's an eight hour drive but we're going to go together and we're going to split the time to go down so in that scenario we can save some money you know that kind of thing and at the end of the day too when we're talking about some of these like random little podunk towns and stuff like that too it's longer of a flight because you're gonna have to make trans transfers and stuff like that so is there anything that you set as far as parameters as to how you're going to travel whether whether it's gonna be flying or driving or whatever it may be um it depends like when i used to live in florida i can't really speak right now living in Arizona. Yeah, because I, I do have to travel everywhere via plane. Yeah. But when I was in Florida, it really depended. Um, I would drive up to like Charleston, which was about a seven hour and 30 minute yeah. drive for us. So anytime that we went to Charleston, we would drive mm-hmm. um, and we would leave first thing in the morning. And it was a very easy drive. We always try to get there around new, noon, one o'clock. So that way we can just head straight to the gym and, and have, you know, the day. Um, yep. 
but mostly I'm trying to do number one. I, if it's for me competing, especially first flight in the morning. And I know that freaking sucks, but at least, you know, with the first flight in the morning, there's less delays or less opportunity for delays. The later in the day, the more that you have an opportunity to miss the, the flight, you know, gets missed, whatever. So first flight of the day, um, obviously a direct, is best but mm-hmm. if you have to do a layover then if i if i'm doing a layover i'll give myself time on the layover so like at least like 30 minutes to 45 minutes to so that i could grab some water get some steps in use the restroom etc um and then i'm also thinking about when i'm traveling like my water and my sodium around travel and you know how long am i going to be sitting and things like that so those are all things that i really consider but as long as if, if i'm competing and if i could drive to the show that's great right because then you can pack everything with you you could pack an air fryer if you want to your yep. lights you know yep. all the things like i used to bring a microwave to charleston because i was driving and that is so convenient um but obviously when you're when you are on a plane you can't bring as much but there are still tools which we're going to bring up today that you can still bring into the hotel room with you to make it a little bit more convenient yep and i would agree with all of that um same, same kind of thing. I, I definitely try to get the first flight out. Dan always, always is mad because he has to drop me off so early at the airport. But you're right. There's less and less opportunity for delays if you're getting up that early. It's like it is what it is. And then you're there and then you can go sleep or do whatever you have to do when you get there. But at least you're there. You don't have to worry about getting stuck in the air somewhere or whatever. I always try to get that first flight, 100%. Yeah. Um, when it comes to our area too another option is the train so i don't know if you guys have that there but we have the train that can go to places in new york and things like that too and sometimes it's sometimes it's faster it's actually faster to take the train than it is even to fly because there's no security or anything like that for the train you just jump on and you're there you know so like if i'm going to um i did spring new york pro if i'm going up there i can get a decent um train ticket for like 30 to 50 bucks if I hit it at the right time. Super cheap. Takes five hours to get there. It takes four hours to drive it. If I was to fly, it takes about two hours, but you still got to go through all the security and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So it's actually the the best option is to take the train. Um, So that's actually a really great option too, because you don't have to drive. You can sleep the whole way there. It's a really easy way to do it, but it's, it's, it's limited, obviously, but <clears throat> check your area. If you've got Amtrak or something in your area, it's a really, really good option. And again, you can take everything with you because while you have a, a, a luggage limit, it's not like you have to go through TSA or anything like that either. So you can take everything with you um, when you, when you take the train too. Um, so those things, I always look at all those different things, get points, you know what I mean? Or whatever with your, with your different travel agencies or however you do it, your apps. I have like three different apps that I use plus then the, 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 you know, the random hotel apps and things like that too. A lot of times my hotels are cheaper through my memberships than it is even going through like the show rate or anything like that. A lot of times I get a lot better rates doing that. Um, so you get different perks and stuff like that as well. They can upgrade. Um, if there's, if there's an option to get a, a room with us with like a suite kind of thing where you're going to have, uh, a microwave, a kitchenette or whatever, that kind of thing. Space. 100% do it. Yeah. Space. Yep. Yep. Again, my girlfriend and I are doing that, that, uh, that, uh, Georgia show. So the, the host hotel down there, there's four host hotels down there. Again, it's like a podunk town. So <clears throat> there's four host hotels and two of them have suites. So we're going to get a suite that we have a kitchen and everything like that in there. So, you know, we can cook our food or whatever we need to do over there, which is huge as a competitor, right? So just look for those kinds of options. Look for those kinds of things reserve them ahead of time too. A lot of times they, you know, they say you need to reserve your, your microwave or whatever it might be. So call the hotel and reserve it ahead of time. So you have that set and ready to go. You'd be surprised how many people don't even think to do that. You know, and then they get there and like, oh, I should have gotten this or I should have done that. Like do it ahead of time. So just check all the, check all those boxes, get a refrigerator, get a microwave, get a, whatever they've got available at the hotel. Cause that's just, yeah, these are all things I'm easier. thinking ahead of time, you know, like yes. when you're traveling, it's, it's still amazing to me when clients are like, well, I'm traveling, what do I do? And I'm like, well, first of all, make sure that your hotel room that you're choosing has a microwave and yep. a fridge on property, which most do, yep. but you always want to yep. check. Um, are you going to be training when you're there? Like, do, do they have a nice hotel gym at the, yes. at the hotel you're picking? Or do they have a crunch or something near you that you could drive to or walk to? Um, those are all things you have to start mapping out ahead of time mm-hmm. so that you know where to go and how long and how to kind of plan your day, which is also going to reduce stress on you. That's right. Um, you'll know that, you know, Pittsburgh is one of the worst 
places to get around. And of course we go there the most for shows. That's right. <laughs> I have two or three gyms out there that I know of that, you know, depending on how much time I have or what equipment yes. they have, I know how much time I need to do, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's, it's really hard to get around in Pittsburgh because their hotel gym stinks and you can't mm -hmm. do anything there. So mm -hmm. I already have that planned out in my brain so that when I get there, I'm not as stressed. I'm not at there at the venue trying to figure out where I'm going, how long I have. I've already thought about all that. And that's right. pre-planning is the key to success. So start thinking about those things ahead of time. That way, you know, right away when you get there, what you need to do and what you have access to. Yeah. And, you know, having those chain gym memberships like the Planet Fitness and stuff like that are fantastic because they're everywhere. So you can right. always find one no matter where you are, where you can get a workout in or if you need to do that. You know, and again, when we're talking about the whole Georgia thing, like we're it's an eight hour drive. So what we're going to plan on doing is finding a gym somewhere along that drive so we can stop go get our pump in our steps or whatever we need to do that day for that Thursday, then get back in the car and drive more. And again, that, that splits up the drive. So we're not doing a straight eight hour shot. Cause that's the other thing too. I'm like, I'm a big believer, especially if you're in prep, you need to get up and you need to walk around. So make sure that you're pulling over every couple of hours and just give yourself 10 minutes just to walk around a rest stop or something like that. You got to keep that blood flow going, you know, don't, don't sit in the car the whole time. If I'm not in prep, and I'm just going to a show or something. I'll drive six hours straight. I'll stop and get gas or go to the bathroom or whatever a couple times. But it's not it's not a huge deal. And that I'll get up at, at that point. But if you're in prep, you need to plan to get up and walk around. Yeah, and even too, I had a client. She's driving into a master statue. She's like, should I be wearing compression socks or am I overthinking it? I'm like, no, wear them. Mm -hmm. Like, wear yeah. anything that you yeah. think could help with water retention. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting on your ass for a long mm -hmm. time water is going to retain, you know? So mm -hmm. yes, compression socks help, you know, keeping water going, which stinks because you're going to have to yep. pee, but you know what? You're going to yep. have to pee no matter what. We're all in prep. So push the water and let it work to your advantage to flush everything out. That's right. Um, and then, like I said, just be mindful of sodium on the road too. You know, a lot of people grab for like, you know, beef jerky and these like really salty foods when they're on the road, which is not helpful for competitors with water retention. That's right. So um, just be really, really mindful about those things and how long you're going to be in the car. Just like you said, like I would, you know, stop every two, two and a half hours and just like John said, it doesn't have to be a long time, 10 minutes, just get up, yep. pee, walk around a little bit, stretch out your legs, get right back in the car and go, yeah. you know, eat a meal, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and the same thing when you're on a flight, I always get the aisle seats when I'm on flights because I can get up and I can go to the bathroom. Yep. So I know some people like to, yeah, some people like to do the, the window seats. I don't because I know I got to climb over people to get out. So I always, I always ask for the aisle seat always. Yes. And for me, it gives me more leg room to stretch out too. I can stretch out into the aisle. <laughs> I mean, some people don't have that problem, but I got long legs. <laughs> yeah. You're going to kick the leg out a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So I always get the aisle seat just so that it's not a big deal. I can get up and walk around anytime I need to, all that kind of stuff. So think about those little things too. And you're right about the pushing the water. Another thing, when you take a flight, take a water bottle with you, have it empty for when you go through TSA. So, and then when you get into the airport, almost every airport now, they have water, water bottle, you know, fee, filling stations. Fill that water bottle up every time you go through, you know, you should get one of those big, you know, one and a half liter bottles and just have that in your, in your carry on and take that with you everywhere you go. Um, I do that because otherwise you spend $5 for an eight ounce thing of water. <laughs> you yeah, I, the other. <laughs> I always have a tra travel bottle with me and I fill that up and like my rule of thumb is like try to do a liter for every hour you're going to be on the flight so that mm -hmm. means like you start drinking it from the time you leave for the airport or in the car or whatever um and then that's just a really easy way to gauge you know yep. and it saves you some money and yes mm -hmm. most airports i could attest have a water refill at yes. this point they, <laughs> they sure do yes. i think i think i mentioned it already but the you know the fitness centers at the hotels too that's where i, I refill my water bottles at fitness centers everywhere i go i take my water bottle with me and fill it up fill it up everywhere yep. i go yeah, we order like liters to the room because Drew like Drew always drinks out of a liter anyway. But like if I'm there and I have my water bottle, I'll try not to use the water bottle so that he can have them. And I refill yeah. at a at a any any water refill. I'm fine with that. And yeah. that saves you money and it's very, very mm -hmm. convenient. Some shows yeah. if they have the flip over water one, by the time we're two days there with all the athletes doing this, most they of the time it's left. empty and they don't have anything left. So be advised <laughs> if it's the flip over one, they probably aren't going to refill it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's true. That's true. The what yeah. the, the hotel at universe, the, what was it? I was, I was at the Hampton, whatever it was, it was across the street. Um, 
it was like nonstop in the gym. Everybody was coming in and getting f- filling up. It was it was one of it wasn't a flip over one. It was just a it was just fill it would fill up the whole time, which Filter. was great. It was fun. Yeah, but it was funny whenever whenever I was in the gym, was, there was always somebody there filling their water bottles up the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> water should be free, in my opinion. Agreed. But you know. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. But that, that makes a big difference, you know. Just little things like that make a big difference. Um, uh, let's see. So we ha- we took some notes here. What else? Some other little travel hack stuff. And then I've got questions too. And then we've got some products to share with you guys as well. So what do we say? Okay, let's talk about going through TSA, food and TSA. So um, you can't go through TSA with liquids. We know that, but you got to as well. So you can't do peanut butter unless they're the, the single serving packets. Like if you bring a full jar of peanut butter, yep, just like that. There you go. She's it's like Vanna White. She's got the, she's got the, <laughs> she's got the almond butter. Those little so, single serving are fantastic. You're fine. You're good. If you try to go through security with your container of peanut butter, they are going to take it and make you throw it away. It's considered a liquid. Um, same thing when we're talking about some foods like, like sweet potatoes. If your sweet potatoes are mashed, they consider that a liquid. You're going to have to throw it away. Um, anything that, that's got that soupy texture to it, you're going to have to throw it away. Um, salt. People go through the, through TSA with their salt shaker or whatever. They will make you throw it away. So I, I have gotten away with it. <laughs> I've had to throw mine away. <laughs> so you go in with a shaker. But if you go in, I go in baggie, with a bag of salt. Baggy, you're fine. Yes, yeah. that's the hack. Go in a baggy. Yeah. So now what I do is I take my shaker and I put it in my my check bag and I have my little baggy of salt and you're fine with that as long as you have yeah. your baggy. But if you have a shaker of salt, they're gonna make you throw it away. Um, what else is is stuff that they'll throw? At? Ice packs. If it's not completely so, solid, frozen solid, you have to throw it away. Um, so my hack to that is. If I'm not shipping mega fit meals to the hotel, I'll prep all of my protein. Your protein has to be cooked. So the number one question I get all the time is, can you bring protein on a plane? Yes. As long as it's not raw. So sure. what, what Sean is saying, like that soupy, like a chicken, a raw chicken breast is like watery soupy type. Right. But a cooked chicken breast, you can bring that on the plane all day long. They do not right. care. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'll prep, I used to cook all my chicken and I would cut it up and then I would just put it in big gallon bags or I would put it in individual bags in a gallon bag and freeze it. And then the morning that I leave, I'll take it out of the freezer and I just put it in my, my carry on bag and then it's just frozen. And then by the time I get to my destination, whether I'm there in two hours or five hours, it's still kind of thawing or Mm -hmm. thawed, which is perfect because I want it thawed out anyway by the time I get there. Um, that way I'm not bringing frozen packets. I don't have to worry about them at all. Um, right. But I have, I, like with medications and stuff, I have some things that need to be on ice and I just make sure that my my ice cubes are frozen by the time that I leave. And then what I do the night before I leave is I try to put them in an ice bucket and sometimes it gets a little bit frozen, sometimes it doesn't. So that's another one where like they let me on the plane with them before, sometimes they don't. But I really don't care, ice packs are super cheap. So if I have to throw yeah. in ice pack, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I use the frozen proteins as ice packs too. Like right. if you've got, you know, if you've got, so what I'll do is just like you said, I'll freeze the majority of my protein, but then I'll have like one or two that I've kept in the refrigerator. That's my food for the day, for the travel right. day. Right. So the ice, the, the actual frozen ones serve as the ice pack for the food that you just took out Packing of the refrigerator. So it works out well. And even if you like, I've even taken frozen foods and put them into my checked bags too, because they'll still be frozen when I get to my destination. So right. that's the best way to do it. Um, as well as having a food prep service actually send your food in. So, um, and you do have to check mega fit meals. Yep. So I did that for Hawaii. I did that for Japan. So you have to check, um, uh, stipulations and regulations technically <laughs> technically for japan you're not supposed to take food in i did but technically you're not supposed to um if they were to search my bags they could have taken the food and they could have thrown it but they didn't so i was fine <laughs> i was crossing my fingers and toes that they weren't going to check my bags because i had all of my protein in there so but let's I talk have- about this real quick because i know this happened to you mm-hmm. and yep. this is also this has happened to me but you were better at being on your feet about this there is a possibility your food does go bad with long travel days. Um, So like I've opened up my bag of chicken before and it was a really long travel day delays and things like that. And it was wretched. Do Mm -hmm. not eat it. 
Mm -hmm. throw it away. There are athletes Mm -hmm. that have eaten it because they get nervous. They're like, well, now what do I do? Don't eat the bad food. So Sean, this happened to you and you were able to go to a restaurant, correct? Mm -hmm. And you asked them to make you like a bunch of fresh food. Like, do you remember that situation? So I've had a few situations like that. So um, one of them was when I was in Puerto Rico. Um, when I got there, they, they didn't have my, my, my bags went to New Jersey. I went to Puerto Rico, so I didn't have my food. So the hotel didn't have, uh, the the fish and stuff that I needed. So I just went around the Island and I found a little mom and pop restaurant and they cooked my fish for me. Um, they tried to, they tried to give me beans and and rice and all that stuff too. And I was like, no, I just need the plain fish. (laughs) So you just tell me you just want whatever you want, just plain and they'll do it for you. Um, there's that, uh, there was also a situation where I was going to Hawaii for the Hawaii pro and, uh, flight got delayed. So I mi- we missed the connecting flight. So we had to stay in LA for a night versus going to, um, Hawaii. So I didn't have any, any food either. Cause my food was being delivered in Hawaii and I was in LA. <laughs> so we went across the street, um, from the hotel that we were at. I was, my husband was with me we went across the street and, um, I got raw chicken and i boiled it in water in the microwave in my hotel room. It tasted like ass, but <laughs> got my food in. that's right. I mean, I just went to the grocery store and got the raw. I mean, that's all they had. They had raw chicken breast and I just stuck it in, in water and boiled it until it was cooked inside the, inside the uh, microwave. You do what you got to do. People are like, how do you cook when you just got a microwave? That's how you do it. You boil it. I mean, that's what I did. It worked. So, you know, that there's, if there was restaurants and stuff, you could do that too. But where we were, there wasn't. So it was just, I I just, and I was like two days out from a show. So I I was just like, I'm just going to go get the plain chicken breast. And then I know it's just plain chicken breast, you know, absolutely. just do the best you can. Yeah. I just wanted to add that in there because it happens, you know, and, and you have to be, it's okay. Don't freak out. There is a, there's a way you have to reach out to your coach, but you know, if there's a restaurant, just go to the restaurant and say, I need a bunch of chicken breasts. I don't need all the sides, like make it plain, blah, blah, blah. And you know what, a coach, you know, they're going to figure it out. You know, if there's a little bit extra sodium in there or butter, it's not the end of the world versus you not eating and not having food. That's um, right. So it's going to happen. You prepare the best you can, but with how much Sean and I travel, it happens to us a lot. You know, sometimes yeah. your food goes spoiled and you pivot, you figure it out. Yeah. Well, in most restaurants nowadays, they have to be able to cook this stuff for you without anything on it because people have allergies and stuff. So it's, right. it's a, it's a thing where it's like, you just tell them you need it dry. You need it. No, no butter, no oil, no nothing. And they'll do it. You know, that's a so, good point. It's not as taboo as it was several years ago, because a lot of people now have food allergies and right. they're, they're used to, restaurants are used to this now. That's right. Yeah. So it's not like, like you said, it's not taboo to ask for that either. You know, they're, they're used to it at this point. So, yeah. um, um, you brought up, so I'm going to bring up a few of these things that you brought as far as, uh, show hacks, um, this electric skillet. So I've got the, where's the, um, I pulled it up on, on Amazon and everything. So let's pull that one up. Here's the electric Yeah, this skillet. one. This is a good one. Um, I don't travel with this anymore. I just, I don't care. I travel with microwavable rice now and my mega fit meals, but some people are really, really gung ho on a fresh, hot meal, you know, whatever in their hotel room. This is a really great option, super cheap, very easy to pack. Uh, this is actually a bigger one because Drew and I used to make meals together in there. They, they do have smaller sizes available. Okay. Um, but this is this is super easy to have in your hotel room. You can make rice in there. You can make your fresh uh, protein on there. Um, people make, make egg whites in there. They make their pancake. People do, you know, their, their yeah. own pancakes. So it's a really great option, you know, to just for somebody that likes like that fresh, crisp, whatever type meal. This is something very easily that you can put in your hotel room. Um, in addition to this, some people do like the Logitech warmer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it looks like like a little lunch box, and then you just put your meal in there. And if you want it in like two hours, you know, you just leave it in there, and it kind of warms it up for you. A lot of people do that because they don't like to walk down to the microwave, and I don't yep. blame you. Like I don't yep. love walking down the microwave either. Um, I, there's been shows where there's a microwave downstairs, but I still deliver one in my hotel room because I don't want to walk down. That's so right. I get, I get that. Um, that some people bring air fryers, like they have like mini yeah. air fryers now, or like the mini, uh, waffle makers and people mm-hmm. put their egg whites in there to make their egg whites. Some people bring like, and I have, I have one at my Florida house, a very tiny rice maker yep. to make fresh rice. So there's a lot of really cool things that you could travel with. If you are somebody that needs that fresh, hot food to make sure that you're comfortable on show weekend. Yep. And I, I actually have all of those things. I never travel with any of them because I'm just like, it's just too much 
to deal with when I travel, but I have like the mini waffle maker. I have the mini like rice maker, but I just don't take them with me when I go places. It's just at home. But if I feel like I want just like a single serving of something, they're great, you know? So when sure. you, with the, with the skillets, did you actually travel with them? Cause I know some people, and I, this is probably pretty wasteful, but I know some people that will actually like Amazon deliver the, the skillet to the hotel and then leave it there when they leave. <laughs> The year that we used this, we kept it in our bag. Like it was yeah. always in our bag, no matter what. And then I would just carry like a little spatula with me and a little spatula spoon and then a tiny thing of Dawn dish soap. And then what I would do is I would cut sponges in half so that I would always have like a little sponge to to clean it. And then I wasn't always using like a big sponge. So, yeah. um, so yes, I traveled with this. And it's funny, okay. like the more, the more that, you, just like you said, like when I was an amateur, I would bring all the things. And then the more I do this, the lighter and lighter my packing is. Cause like, yeah, really, I, don't like I don't care. I don't care yeah. if my food is cold. I don't care if my food is warm. I don't really care what I'm eating right now. Like I just want to eat and go to bed. Like, That's right. so, I'm um, <laughs> but for the people, like I said, that, you know, some people just cannot eat recooked or like yeah. mute food so this yep. is a really really perfect option and it's very easy to travel with yeah i have one of those hot logic things too and i i don't even bring it with me anymore yeah <laughs> like i used to bring it with me everywhere i go and i don't even bring it with me anymore yeah yeah <laughs> like, like whatever yeah, it's cold i don't it. care yeah. i don't care <laughs> i was like like i'll even like the like making oatmeal or cream of rice in the in the hotel room, I'll use the coffee pot in the hotel yeah. room to make hot water and then I'll make it from that. I even go yeah. to the microwave and use the coffee pot. So right. yeah. there's that. Um I'm just gonna click through because I've got all these up here. So this is the 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 cutlery that you had here. So you bring this stuff with you? Take the knife out. Um PSA took my knife. Yeah. Um but yes, this is really cool. You got a butter knife? They took the butter knife? Yeah, they took the butter knife. I'm like, what? Who am I gonna hurt with that? And I can't even cut my, kid, my chicken with that. But it's cool because it. So this is what it looks like. But I've kind of makeshifted it. I have straws in here, or whatever. So um, Drew and I both have one of these, and um, so it has a fork in there, spoon, obviously chopstick, which have come in handy post show when you order sushi and they don't give you chopsticks. How many times has that happened? I'm like cool it has a straw in there um and it has a straw cleaner too which actually does come in handy sometimes on show weekends like i don't know about you guys but like when i have meals like i get like little stuff under my fingers and yeah. stuff so it, like it just helps clean so this is really really cool something you could easily travel with uh just take the knife out i guess or yeah. you know play russian roulette with it <laughs> that's that's not a bad idea what i do honestly is when i go through like tsa i'll stop at one of the um little restaurants or something and I grab their silverware that, or the you know the plastic wear that they yeah. have there so and I just throw that out my bag like I, I just have plastic wear in my bag all the time because I'll just stop and grab like the little you know forks and spoons and napkins and just throw them in there so that's do what that I do that too with the sodium like the little sodium packets yeah. they have if you guys yep. need sodium go grab them at the restaurants and then they're in those yeah. little single serving packs some of the like coffee shops and stuff will also have honey little honey packets yep. so you could get those for backs and so peanut butter yep, yep. Mm -hmm. If I see those, I'll grab them for my athletes that like run out of food or I need them, whatever. So like those are like gold if you can yes. find those little individual packets. And then you don't even even if you don't use them that weekend, just keep them in a Ziploc bag in your in, in your bag. And then you never know when you're going to need it. You just always have it on you. Yeah. And like the like the continental breakfast at the hotels, same yes. thing. You yes. know, just grab your grab your jelly there or whatever. They always have jelly. They always have they always have those little honey packets and stuff like that. The so individual you're good. peanut butter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Um, let's see what else we got up here. The bowl. Yep, yeah. we got the bowls next. So there's every these time are I post these, storage. people are like, What are those? So these are really <laughs> cool because they, they snap on so it has a top and a bottom to it, but it's flat. So yeah. I just literally pack it like this and then it's, it's yep. a pretty deep bowl. So it lit this one that I g gave you guys comes in five. Um, and these last me forever. I mean, I buy like these like every six months if, cause I don't use, I don't use uh, knives on these. So they last a really right. long time, microwavable safe. Um, so yeah, yeah, these, these are clutch. And yeah. when I'm traveling, so what Sean said earlier about, you know, packing her meal for the plane, I'll put my chicken, rice, whatever oats in here, and I'm able to smush it down still with the food. There's just enough room, if it's not like too over full, that it's still flat. And then I'll just lay this in between my my mm -hmm. frozen protein so it stays cold until I want it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get some of these because I have I have one. It's a, it's one of those ones that's got the three compartments on it, and it's it smushes down. And I take that with me everywhere, so I use it for everything. Like that's that's my plate, my bowl, my everything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, bring, I think I need to get some more. 
yeah. I'll bring two because I'll do the one that I eat out of. And then like when you open up the chicken that yeah. you brought with you, if you need it to like Something store in the refrigerator. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah. All, yeah. The, all the things we're learning, to, even I'm learning today. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially like with the mega fit, like once you open this, you don't want yeah, you to put it, it in open something. in the fridge. So I'll open this, put it in one of those bowls and then it stays fresh. Yeah. This for me is, um, I actually just bought a new one because it's, it's being delivered today. Um, this for me is a, is a big thing. It's a, it's a coffee press and you make your coffee inside of it and then you just drink out of it too. So cool. I, I'm a big coffee person. Obviously when I'm doing hair and makeup at shows, I'm up at 3 a.m. and there's no coffee shops open at 3 a.m. and coffee hotel like from the pot in the, in the room sucks. <laughs> So I bring my own my own beans. I bring my own grinds, and then um, I just use the coffee pot in the room to heat the water. And then I actually use the French press, and this is literally a tumbler, so you can take it with you once you've got your your coffee in there. It's fantastic. So this That's is something that cool. I take with me everywhere I go. And then you can make super strong coffee too. I'm a strong coffee type of person, so you can make it as strong as you want to make it. So this is this comes in really really handy because again, it's just like having a little tumbler everywhere you go, but it's actually a French press. So this is something that saved my life a lot of times as shows because again getting up at 3 a.m is, is, is a lot of fun to do hair and makeup mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i also have gotten these for um clothing and stuff like that this helps a lot with storage space in your in your luggage obviously it's not going to help with weight it's still going to be heavy but i have fit like my um like all my black clothes and all my like uh, sheets and stuff they have to take for tanning and everything. And I put all of that inside one of these and just suck all that air out. And A, you're not going to get the tanning stuff all over the rest of your clothes if you do that. But B, it just takes up so much less space. I always travel with my pillow. So if I'm driving, it's not a big deal. I don't, I don't worry about this when I'm driving. But if I'm flying, I have a lot of stuff I need to pack into one piece of luggage, you know? And a pillow takes up a lot of space. But if you put it inside one of these and suck all the air out, it's it's flat. So you can fit everything That's really in cool. there. So That's this really, really has cool. been huge. I use these. I use, I, I've used these for a lot, but like when I, when I went to Hawaii and Japan, I was gone for a full two weeks. So I was able to get all of my stuff in there a whole lot easier just by taking all the air out of it. So this is, this came in really, really handy for me the last few years. Um, so again, it doesn't help with the weight, still the same weight, but you got a whole lot more space when you get the air pulled out. And again, when you've got dirty clothes, you can put dirty clothes in one of them. You can put clean clothes in another. So you're not mixing everything. You know, we all know how we smell fantastic with all that tanning and all of <laughs> All of that. So this helps to keep that stuff separated as well, uh, which is good. So your whole bag doesn't smell like tan. So there's that. <laughs> Those are really cool. And you're right. Like the sheets and the blanket and the pillow, like all that takes up a lot. It takes up pretty much half my suitcase. So I'm going to grab some of these for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. And make sure you get one of the ones that has the, the hand pump because okay. some of them have a pump where you can hook it up to a vacuum and it'll suck all the air out. But obviously if you're on the road, you don't have a vacuum cleaner. You don't get that on the way back. Yeah. Right. So right. just have the hand pump and it's really easy. I mean, it takes a couple of minutes to get all the air out, but it's, it's not bad, you know, and you, yeah. get, your, you get your pump in with your biceps. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I, I feel like all of us listening could, could handle that. If not, yeah. There's a deeper yeah. issue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. but they work great. They work great for space saving. Um, and then the other thing that I pulled up here too was just a travel ring light. So um, again, I always I always take a travel ring light with me regardless because I'm doing hair and makeup. If I'm driving, I can take my regular ring light. If I'm flying, you need something more compact. So hair and makeup, but also as an athlete, you need it for your check-in photos. Hotel There's, room yeah. lighting sucks. <laughs> it's horrible as a coach. Terrible. You're like, I can't see anything right now. Yeah. It's terrible. So it's terrible. do your coach a favor, <laughs> get yourself one of these little travel lights. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's again, it's just, it's collapsible. It's not big. You can put it anywhere you need to put it in your room. And then at least you've got light, especially when you're doing some of these shows where you have to be up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, you need light, you know, so make sure you got, you got a light. Um, and that works, works great. And again, you can stick this in your check bags or you can take it in your carry on. So you don't smush it too. That's something as well. Um, what else? Oh, I wanted to show the reel that you guys that you put together as well for, I'm just going to pop this up on the screen. Um, 
Something I should have included here, but I'll just mention it. I don't think I, I don't think I talk about it. So this is a reel that I've made, um, is a travel body weight scale. So like, I know a lot of athletes don't want to bring their body weight scale to show weekend, but it's so helpful for us as a coach, especially for doing multiple shows to, to collect data. So I have a travel scale, which is about this big. I mean, it's not big at all. It's very thin. Um, and it's perfect. It's like a Bluetooth and it monitors it on my phone. And I actually use that as my scale all the time now, just so it's consistent because I travel so much. There's a the little Don dish. So, uh, um, but I think that's really, really helpful and something that, you know, athletes are like, well, I didn't bring my scale cause it's so big. I'm like, okay, well yeah. just buy a travel one, <laughs> you know? Right. So it's, it's, if you're somebody that travels a lot for work or you're doing back to back shows, like buy just buy yourself a travel scale. That way yeah. you just have a consistent data measure point all the time. Yep. And I have the same thing, but it's, it's a little bit different. I, don't, I thought I was going to play through again. I'll just re refresh it. Maybe it'll play through again. Um, there we go. Um, but mine's lightweight as well. It's a little bit bigger than yours. You do, you do have it here on this reel because I saw it when I was looking at it. So it is in here. Um, there it is. There right it is. There. Yep. So mine is about twice the size of yours, but it's still very light. And that's the one that I use all the time. So um, I talk about this too, different scales are diff calibrated differently. I mean, my, my husband has a different scale in his bathroom and his actually weighs me heavier than my scale does. So it's like, if you're going back and forth or you're going to wherever you're going to, and you're weighing yourself on the scale in the fitness center or something, it's not going to be the same as the one that you're on. And again, the weight doesn't matter. The consistency does, right? Yeah. You got to make sure that you've got the same weight logs. That's why taking that travel scale is important. Um, I'm surprised at how many people don't think about taking taking a scale with them. Like Me too. you need to, you know, I, I just figured, and I, and I have some clients that like they've, tr they've competed before and they just didn't ever bring a scale with them. And I was like, I just thought that was just common sense, you know, but their coaches never asked for their weight. Like, well, they're, well, they're at the show or whatever. I'm like, no, I, I want these data points. And again, I always go back to, it doesn't, we talk about this a lot. It doesn't matter what the weight is, but we need to have data points. So we know what we're doing, you know, and if, it, if what we're doing is working or if we need to add more this or that or whatever it may be, we just need to have data points. So, I mean, for my clients, they know, like they, they start checking in daily eight days out from show sometimes yeah. soon, depending on mm -hmm. how difficult the peak is, but they're giving me weights constantly. I mean, some mm -hmm. of them are giving me weights after each meal in peak week. So I'm using that as a data point every day to see how we're progressing. Are we filling out? Are we getting, you know, where are we? Um, yeah. So to just abruptly stop that on a Wednesday or Thursday before show and not consider taking that data into show day. Right. That's, yeah. that's, that's crazy. Um, I also think that people don't realize there's, there's variance in scales. You know, I had a client that was out of town this past weekend. She stepped on a scale in the middle of the gym and she was four pounds less than her typical scale. And she was like, Oh my God, I lost four pounds. I'm like, let's wait and see when you get back to your scale at home. She was the same exact weight. You know, yep. so it just, it depends on the scale, you know? Yep. So that's why consistency is everything. Now, if you were to weigh on that scale in the gym every day, then that mm -hmm. would be a consistent measure and that would be your data point, right? That's right. So it's, it's difficult, but as an, as an athlete, consistency in anything and everything in this sport is, is everything, right? Absolutely. So the same scale you weigh on, the same nut butter that you eat every day, like yeah. you don't want to change anything. If you do it the Sunday, Monday before peak week, before show, you should continue that trend all the way till show. Yep. Just, even, just even how you cook your food too. Like we talked 100%. about before, like if you, if, you, if you have to, you can boil your chicken, but if that's not how you typically do it, don't do it that way, don't. you know? Right. So right. keep it consistent, keep everything consistent. And this just helps you keep things consistent. Um, let's see, what else? Did I miss anything? I'm looking at your notes. Did I miss anything? No, um, just a note for this reel too. Um, on my Instagram, there's a highlight reel called food. So I have a lot of like tips, tricks. I talk a lot about different foods that I've packed over the years that are really convenient, um, you know, for people and, and whatnot. So if, if you're struggling with that, take a look at that too. A couple of those videos are me showing you guys how I pack the protein and put them in the freezer and things like that. So if you're not, you know, wanting a visual or kind of how we do that, uh, go into the, to the highlight reel called highlight. food on my Instagram and you guys should okay. be able to see all those as well. Cool. Yeah. I was looking at our, our little list here. I think the only thing we didn't talk about was um, just Instacart. So the beautiful thing now is that everything's convenient. I mean, if you forget something, so you can Instacart it, you know, um, it used to be when I was competing, it used to be that we had to get rental cars because we had to go to the grocery store if we forgot anything or whatever. Now we don't even have to do that. Like you just get an Uber to your hotel, you stay there. And if you forget anything, they deliver it to you. <laughs> it's so much easier. 
Yeah. You know, we get this question all the time as a coach, like, well, coach, how do I stay on plan? You know, when I'm traveling and I'm like, it's actually very easy. It's just a choice, you know? Yeah. Um, it's very easy to stay on your plan when you're out of town, you know, going back to the you know beginning of the conversation, it's just about taking, you know, some steps of preparation before you leave, you know, cooking all of your chicken and making sure you freeze it, make sure you have everything you need when you get there. And, you know, there's things that I know that I always need when I land. I order my coffee creamer. I order some more uh, jasmine rice packs. I pack as many as I can that I'm going to need for that day or the next day. That way I have food when I get there. But I, I'm not going to bring like fruit and cold items. I get those delivered. Um, right. And it's 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 easy. You just yeah. deliver what you need to your hotel room. You know, it's not about finding things. It's about are you going to choose to hit your plan and stay consistent? Um, there, where there's a will, there's a way, you know, we've mm -hmm. given you so many options now, if there's no microwave, now you have a skillet, you know, if yep. you don't have chicken, go to the restaurant across the street, you know, yep. um, if you don't have water, get it instacarted. Like, yep. you know, you can, with Sean and I, it's, it's hard now because, you know, a lot of clients come out, well, this excuse and this excuse and this excuse, and I have a combat for everything. I've been doing yeah. this too long now that I know all the hacks of yes. how to stay on plan. So you know, it's, it, and it is a lot, you know, like I'm leaving on Thursday tonight. I'm starting to pack. I'm starting mm -hmm. to prepare tonight. I have a checklist already in my phone. I have a comp competition checklist. So when, when I compete, all the things that I have to bring and a coaching checklist when I'm coaching what I need to bring. And then I just use that checklist every single time. Um, uh, for people that travel a lot, if you're starting to compete buy two of everything, yeah. You know, when I open up that bag after, on Sunday, I take out all those clothes, I throw them in the laundry, but I have two face washes, two toothbrushes, two of this, two of this. That way I'm not taking Same. everything out. I just leave it in the bag. When laundry is done, I fold it all up, throw it back in the bag. It's, back ready in. For, it's ready for <laughs> yep. the next weekend, you know? So mm -hmm. just try to make it easier on yourself. If you're somebody that travels a lot for work, get two of everything and slowly yes. start accumulating those things. I know it's expensive to buy two of everything, but it'll save you a lot of stress in the mm -hmm. long run. Yeah, and over, and over the time, you're going to use them anyway. Like, face wash, you're going to use two face washes at some point. You know what I mean? Like, right. you're going to do that. You know, yeah. and, then, and again, like you said, it just makes things easier. And, you know, the thing, too, with, like, Instacart, once you've used it once, it stores your your what you've ordered. So all you really got to do is hit repeat every time you go. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something I do as well is I make sure that when I get to my destination, I unpack everything to make sure I didn't forget anything. Correct. Because immediately I can see, oh, I forgot this or I forgot got that and I can add it to my order, you know, or like, but if I wait and then it's like midnight when I'm unpacking everything and I realize I forgot something, I'm like, it's a whole lot harder so to well. get something at that point, you know? Right. So, you know, and be aware of your surroundings, be aware. Like a lot of times these, these hotels are right next to drugstores and stuff. So you can go get whatever you need to get, you know, that you're, you're good, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so just, just be, just be prepared. is the main thing. Just be prepared. There's no excuse anymore. Everything in our in our world today is so easily accessible. Right at yeah. our fingertips. Yeah. Even I mean again, even when I went to Japan, I ran out of rice, which in Japan, come on, it's rice. <laughs> It's like, there's no excuse. I just take, and you know, you got your phone on you. It's got Google translate right there. You take a picture of it. You can see what you're buying. It took me a little bit longer in the grocery store. Cause I got to make sure I got, I'm got getting the right thing and I'm getting the right almonds and I'm getting the right this, but it's there, you know, I, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for it. You can figure it out. You've got everything right here at your fingertips. Like if you have a question, Dr. Google or whatever is there for you. Like, yeah, they got, they got you covered. You know, there's no excuse. You can make it happen. You can make it work. Yeah. Um, that's it. Um, any, anything else that you wanted to add on to this topic? Cause we got, we, I had a few questions come in, but the questions that came in, we covered all of the, all of the hit points. One of them was about like, if you're, if you're, if you're, hiking or something. I mean, I think we pretty much covered that too. You can take all this, all these little packets and stuff like that we talked about, you know, stick it in your bag and you're good to go. Take your, take your pre pre-made meals and stick them in there take your little, you know, whatever your little Ziploc baggies full of stuff and stick them in your bag to, to hike with, you know, it makes it yeah. easier. The only thing so. I would say is if you do have stuff in your bag, it's so funny. I travel with chicken in my bag every single weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I do have TSA pre-check and uh, clear. So once I got those, it, you go through, you go through the line so much faster because you're cleared. Yeah. So they don't necessarily take a look in your bag anymore. Um, but when I didn't have those things, they would pull me all the time. And most of the time they weren't even looking for the chicken. They were looking for like a protein powder. So if yeah. you have protein powder that you're taking with you, I would put that in your checked bag because it's going to take you a little bit longer because they're going to test it. Um, so powders just try to stay out of your bag. It's totally okay for you to put it in your check bag. 
they're just going to hold you up and they're going to test it. So if you right. have an extra 15 minutes to spare, sure, throw it in your bag. It's fine. But um, so just be mindful of what you're throwing in there. But I know people just have this really weird fear of putting protein in their bag. And I promise you, as long as it's cooked, you you are fine within the States. Yes. Um, and then, you know, Sean said too about, you know, going to Japan, like it's not mm -hmm. okay, but she did and got it in. And mm -hmm. I've done the same thing with Mexico when I went in for and, and Puerto Rico for, mm -hmm. for events. I put it in my bag and I got it through. Was it allowed? I don't know, but I got it through. You know, what's yeah. the worst thing they do? They take it. They I'm take still going to try anyway, right? Yeah. But within the United States, it's allowed as long yes. as it's it's cooked. So that was the only thing I was going to say is if you have powders, maybe just try to try to put them in your check bag. Yeah, and if you're, if you're going through TSA, it's always a good idea to have all of your food in a separate container anyway because you can pull it out of your out of your check, your, your bag, and then have it separate and then they know it's food you know what i mean it's just easier that way so if you have it strewn all over your inside your bag they're gonna rip your whole bag apart in order to find everything basically so just be aware Literally. of that kind of stuff you know so yeah um yeah and when it came to you know japan like i said like <laughs> just don't make yourself a target you know what i mean like that's all you gotta do i, I mean I, I tell people all the time i've got dogs on my on my luggage like little like labradors on my on my luggage so people like they're great conversation pieces anywhere I go. People always want to start conversations and smile and like laugh and talk with me about my bags. And that's what happened when I went to Japan. Like he, the guy couldn't speak hardly any English when I went through customs. And he was like, nice dog. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, nice dog. I was like, yeah. awesome. <laughs> and that's all he had to say. And I was through. That's a, good, that's a really good point though, because like I'm the same way. Like when I'm not yeah. close to show and I'm traveling, we're all stressed. We're all yeah. like very thin nice with our temper and being nice when they're searching through your bag goes a really long way. Yeah. I have, I have traveled in my, in my carry on my roller with my face wash for months. Yeah. I would say a year. No one has ever stopped me. Of course, the one weekend that I was flying out of St. Pete and went to that wedding in Virginia and I was up <laughs> for 35 hours, he pulls my bag and he's like, man, this is eight ounces. And I was like, sir, I was like, I'm really sorry. I have not slept for 33 hours. I was like, if you're going to take it, that's fine. It's against the rules. I was like, but it's really expensive and I would appreciate it if not. He's like, I'm going to let you go today. I was like, oh, that but if I was just like an easy. asshole and I was like, yeah. hey, you, you know, he probably would have took it, you know, so yeah. being nice goes a really long way. So just try to take a breath. Yeah. and hope that it works out you know most of the time like they get it they're gonna try to figure it out as they can they're not most of the time trying to be jerks so yeah if you acknowledge yeah. it and be like sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry but please can i keep it yeah. sometimes i'll let you go <laughs> now, i'll be honest those dog those dog luggage i mean it's it's been great like i don't know people just just have a fantastic like you're like, nice attitude. lady with dogs on her back yeah exactly i'm you're like you're these are fantastic you know i was like <laughs> everywhere i go people are smile and laugh and want to make you know conversation because i have dogs on my luggage you know so there you, there you go i mean it looks we'll it looks it. silly but you know i never nobody ever takes my bags because they know that it's a it's, it's, a, it's not a dog it's <laughs> not theirs so i don't ever have that problem but i used to go to florida all the time for, for during the covid years we would go to orlando all the time there's kids everywhere because of disney so it's like i the best thing would be standing there at, at baggage claim waiting for my bags to come around the bed the, the the belt and i would see kids like get all excited when they'd see my bags come out it's the best thing ever so you're gonna be sad when something happens to those they already have been breaking like one of them like japan it, it cracked and the, so i had to take duct tape to tape it back together that's my it's a three set so the big set the big one is the one that's broken so i don't take that one anymore i take the, the bottom two but i'm like they're gonna they're gonna go at some point but i'm gonna have to get another set i'm just gonna have to get another set because they're great Google. i've had, I've had them since i've had them since 2020 they've lasted pretty well pretty good so I can't that's can't that's a good return on yeah. investment for life yeah. <laughs> Hundred percent, yeah. That's Dan a really good me. return on investment. Yeah, he got them for me when I did. I did Fashion Week in New York, so he got them for me as like a gift for my travel and stuff, and I've used them ever since. And so, they've done really, really well over the last four years. Yeah, I was gonna say almost five years. Like you're probably yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Just gotta get some more dogs. My favorite so, bag. My favorite travel bag is the away bags. So the away bags. Everybody away okay. yeah away i'll look those i have out. the big I'll one i have the carry we both have a carry on we have the big one it's okay it's awesome i will i will log that because i'm gonna have to get new ones pretty soon they are kind of yeah. falling apart so i'll log that right here <laughs> away <laughs> away bags that's easy to remember Very that's easy. easy to remember so all right so with that i think that's a good place to wrap it up um any closing thoughts safe no. travels everybody 
<laughs> yeah, no, right. We're off to another weekend of travel. So we're going to, yes. we're going to apply all of these hacks ourselves. So yeah. I know some of you guys are doing the same thing. Hopefully this is helpful for you going forward. If it is comment, let us know which, which hacks you're using or which ones you're going to use going forward. We'd like to hear, hear those thoughts as well. Um, and other than that, as always like comment and subscribe, uh, this is episode, we said it's 47, right? That's what we're on. <laughs> I always forget. Numbers are not my thing. Uh, yeah. Anyway, 47. And for that, we will see you guys back here again. <laughs>